All right, welcome to Arranging Misty. Uh, so first of all, when I'm writing a chart, I normally do a lot of planning before I start putting notes into Sibelius. So I already have a general idea of how this chart is going to sound. But right now I'm just going to go through and I'm going to work out all the harmonies and everything like that. So uh, we're doing this tune as a funk shuffle, and the metronome mark is 168-ish. I might change that later if you need, if I need to. this little intro thing here it's gonna go like this um, the melody is gonna be in the saxes and I'm doing like a mixture between unison and harmony like we're switching back and forth so this is all unison until we get here Here we hit a chord, um, and then back to unison. Is that what I wrote? No, not quite. That's what I wrote. And then, so for these first few bars, we're like all in. E flat land, um, and we're having like a two five somewhere in these bars here. But instead of going back to one, we're going to an E major seven chord to give it some harmonic interest. And then from there, I'm just going to go around the circle of fifths or fourths to get back to E flat. And when I'm writing harmony and stuff like that, it usually helps me to like actually write out the chord changes so I can see where the harmony is changing on the sheet. And I don't know what the quality of some of these chords are going to be yet, so for now I'm just writing them as sevenths, but I might go in and change that later. Um, I think the B flat seven goes right there. There we go, like that. So that is the melody of the intro. And actually, 
actually. I misaligned the harmony slightly. The harmony is actually going to go like that. There's two bars of C7. Okay. Now, I gotta enter some harmony here. I'm just gonna make it a three, six, two, five. And then we get to E major okay now while all this is happening I've written some a couple spots in the bass instruments to respond and fill some of the space like this Actually, since I wrote this bass line to go to B flat right there, I might want the harmony to change. Or I could make it like a uh, F minor 7 over B flat, B flat sus. Okay, I'll come back to that. Now that I've got the melody and the chord changes written out, I want to decide what the tonalities of all those chords are going to be. Okay. And so this is the spot where I'm thinking, like, it's a, the root of the chord is D. And then in the melody, I have a 4 or an 11 and a flat 9. So... I don't want to make it a regular dominant chord. I could make it a sus flat nine. Although, I think I want something a little less dissonant. And since we're in the key of E flat, the uh, diatonic chord starting on D would be a D half diminished. And that's what I think I'm going to do here. And then we've got a G chord, we've got a flat 9, a root, a 7, and a flat 13. And that, to me, just looks like a pretty standard G7 alt. Okay. Now, I'm kind of thinking it might be a good idea to actually have the harmonic rhythm be a little bit faster on these two bars. Um, because we've had like harmonic rhythm of whole notes here. I'm thinking maybe half notes would be a good idea here, especially since we've got this bass motion in half notes. So I think I'm going to say... Um, let's see, this first chord is just a... A B flat and a G over C, so that's just a C7, which is perfect. Um, 
And we have a D chord with a flat nine and a sharp nine. So that's like D7 sharp nine or D7 alt. Um, I'm going to say D7 alt for the moment. But if I wind up using a natural fifth in there somewhere, like in the brass, I can change that. Okay, an E flat chord with a B in the melody and a G flat. Like a B and a G flat in the melody. Oops, that is not what I meant to do. That's what I meant to do. Okay, this could just be like a B chord over D sharp spelled in harmonically. Um, I'm going to come back to that and we're going to look at this chord. Um, F and E flat over E. Did I write something down for this? I take notes on a lot of things and I don't always remember what I've thought about and what I have not. This is looking to me like the kind of situation where I want to use an accented passing chord or neighbor chord on, on beat three to lead to this, the end of three. Because the end of three I can harmonize as like a C7 sharp nine and then over E, which would work out perfectly. It's just the F that's like causing problems, but if I treat that as outside of the scope of C7, then I think that would be fine. So if we're going to do that, C7 sharp 9 over E. Okay, and now back to this chord. Did I write something down for this? Okay, I think I am just going to make it a B something over D sharp. B7 over D sharp. Because that can almost be treated like a move, just moving up a half step to the C7 over E. And that might make my life a lot easier. Okay. And now, still got to think about what to do here, but I'll come back to that. Okay. And now is the part where I want to start putting in some brass. And you're going to go like this. And one way I commonly harmonize brass is to like take whatever voice and whatever four note voicing I use in the trumpets and copy paste it in the trombones down the octave. The only caveat is sometimes you wind up with minor ninths in there. Like since I've got a half step between the minor third and the nine in this G minor nine chord. We wind up with a minor ninth between the A and the B flat. So I'm actually gonna change that chord just one note so that it's a root instead of a nine because the nine is a color tone anyway. We don't need to have too much of it.
Okay. And here, I'm going to do the same thing in the brass that I'm doing with saxes, where it starts off in unison and splits into harmony. I'm going to just copy that, except that's not where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be right there. But I might want to change how I'm harmonizing this. Okay. I'm actually going to go like this. Since this is a little bit more of a fat chord, I guess, um, I want to start using some triads in the trumpets with the melody doubled in the fourth. And let's see. So that's what a G sharp minor triad over E? Yeah, I think that's exactly what I want. Actually, no. I want a B major triad over E. I want to get a 9 in there. Whoops. There we go, like that. And then... Let's see. Trombones. We're going to harmonize like this. I want bass bone on the root. Um, third. Could just go with the same voicing I had in the saxes, actually. Like that. Yeah, I'm thinking that might be the way to go. And I'm actually going to put that in octaves, like that. Perfect. OK. Let's copy all this bass stuff into the bass bone. Okay, and here I've got the saxes playing the melody, and I'm kind of putting everything else in the same rhythm as the bass motion, the bass instruments. So I'm going like this, trumpets. G7 Alt, I don't want to do that. Actually, first, I want to put in the trumpet one sort of melody that I wrote. It's just a thing to designed to go in contrary motion with the bass. Okay, and now we gotta go through and harmonize this. Uh, 
Okay. So, normally over a, a G7 alt chord, I would have an E flat and a B flat to give it a sharp 9 flat 13, but the E flat would be a whole step away from the melody, which is not ideal. It like makes tends to make the melody less clear. So I think what I'm going to do is that. So we have sharp 9 and sharp 11, which still fits perfectly over an alt sound. And now I realize I just put an F over a C7 chord. Actually, I think I want to make this a C minor 7. I think that would fit better with the harmony anyway, because this is... D minor 7 flat 5 to G7 alt is totally a 2 5 in C minor. So, and that'll make the F work out perfectly. Um, I think I'm going to go like that. D7 alt. Um, I think that's what I want. A flat major over D7. So that's flat 9 and sharp 11. Yeah, that still works over on the alt chord. Well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say B7 sharp 9 over D sharp. So this is actually just moving up a half step. Cool how that worked out. Um, that would be D major triad over B. That is our B7 upper structure. B7 sharp 9 upper structure. C7 sharp 9. We're going to go like that. C minor triad, and that will give us the sharp 9. And then F minor 11. And now I'm starting to think triads might not be the way to go this whole time because we're starting to get kind of low in the fourth trumpet. Or actually, I could just double the lead trumpet part in octave in the second trumpet because that's in the range where it's still perfectly manageable to have two trumpets on the same line. Hmm. Maybe. Okay, first I'm going to work out these trombone parts, and then I'll see whether I need to do anything. Um, okay, this is where we have the B7, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just go a B major triad because we actually don't have the root anywhere else in this chord yet, except the melody, but I want to reinforce it. A little bit. So we're going to go like that. And then same thing here. 
and yeah, that is definitely getting, well, I want to avoid voice crossing between um, trumpets and trombones. So first of all, I can just move the top notes down. Okay, so there's that. I think just for these last two chords, I am going to get rid of the bottom note and I'm going to double the melody note in octave. And then the thing that I start thinking about is, is that going to be like super awkward for the trumpets? But let's see, D, E flat, E flat is fine. Um, F sharp, G, G is fine. A, C, B flat is fine. Okay. So voice leading wise, I think that's all going to work out fine. I'm still thinking I might want to get rid of these bottom notes. Actually, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to reinforce the melody in octave here. Okay. There's that. And now this bar is, I'm going to orchestrate this throughout the whole band, starting like this. And I'm going to fill in the bass part. Um, that okay so this is all basically just B flat 7 but I am definitely gonna have like a neighbor chord right here and I'm thinking I might have like a chromatic approach chord right here or it could be just a passing chord I have not decided that yet but okay here I'm going to get that. Now, okay, here's the thing. If I were to harmonize this C this in the same fashion that I'm harmonizing these B flats, it would look like that because a C the nine of a B flat seven chord is just a substitute for the root. So it's like serving the same function, which means all of the other notes would stay the same, which is something that I definitely want to avoid. So what I'm actually gonna do is, I'm just gonna look at where the end goal is, the target chord, which is this, um, the D on the end of four which is still a B-flat-7 chord, which I'm going to harmonize, I think, like this. Or I could make it an upper structure. Um, That might actually be really cool as a flat nine upper structure, like G major triad over B, over B flat, I mean. So that would be. So that would look like that.
<laughs> yeah, actually, I think that is the harmony I want to use there. Yeah, I'm going to treat that like a B-flat-7, flat-9. Although I might want to rearrange how I voice the saxes. I'm, so I might come back to that after I deal with the brass. So trumpets are going to be on the triad. Bones. Let's see, what am I going to do with you? We're just going to go like that. Okay. Now, how am I going to harmonize the brass here? Uh, you guys are going to go... I'm going to go G minor triad right there. So that we're getting the 13 in there again, and then trombones. So I could actually treat this whole measure as B flat 7 flat 9, because the only C is right here, which I'm treating as a passing chord anyway. So I think I'm actually just going to put my trombones like that. Except that that gives us some overlap between the lead bone and the fourth trumpet. I think I'm actually going to go like this. Perfect. Okay. And then, whoops. We go like this. that and we do the same thing here do I want to keep the saxes like that okay we've got yeah I think that actually does make the most sense as to how to voice the saxes, so we're going to go like that. Did something not work with my trumpets here? Hang on. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Normally, what I do is I wait till the end to explode all, all of the parts, but when I'm like writing a passing chord like this, a lot of times it helps me to visualize each part 
on its own as opposed to trying to having to visualize them all together. So I'm going to go ahead and explode these right now. Like that. And since there's no passing chord between a half step, I'm just going to keep it on the A flat. Um, let's see. We're exploding these into three staves. Okay, and I'm going to double the lead trumpet part again. Perfect like that. And finally, my trombone. Again, no passing chord. Actually, wait, that's an A flat, which means there is a passing chord. Perfect, like that. Okay, and that is the intro. Okay, melody. So, um, this charge is going to be a tenor feature. And the first statement of the melody, at, at least the, um, the A section is going to be a tenor. Oops. So when I'm writing the melody in just one instrument, I typically just write like a very stock version and I allow the player to interpret it however they want. So I'm not gonna worry about how, I'm not gonna worry about how musical I'm actually making the, the uh, first A section. Now the second A section, I'm gonna bring in the rest of the saxes And now I am going to start to worry about how I'm, how I'm actually phrasing the melody. Hmm. 
<clears throat> okay. Again, I'm starting to think in terms of where I want to end up, which is on the major seventh. Um, and I want to give it a little anticipation. But I want to do something a little bit more than just five, three, seven. Um, not that I have to be crazy, but like something a little bit more. Okay, that's the rhythm I want. I'm not quite sure what the notes are going to be yet. But it's going to be something like. Yeah, I think that's how I want it. Perfect, just like that. There. Okay. So I'm trying to write a melodic statement that's like fitting to this funk shuffle vibe. So I'm getting trying to get a decent mixture of like on the beat and anticipating the beat and a mixture of long notes and short notes, which I will have to put in some articulation for later. Or now. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Now for the bridge, I'm going to put the melody in the brass. And I'm going to like slightly alter the, the rhythm of the melody, so it's going to sound like...
No, actually. I want to keep this idea of landing on the long note on the downbeat throughout the whole bridge, or at least twice. I might change it in the third time, but... I definitely want to do the same idea here, like that. Like that, perfect. But actually, just to give it a little bit of variety, I'm going to go like that. I'm going to change the chord right there. Now, I want to, I want to do something slightly different with the harmony. Okay. I'm going to start putting some chord changes in. Now, where it would normally go to A minor for two bars and then D7 for two bars, I'm actually going to put in a couple extra changes. We're going to go B half diminished, E7, then A half diminished, D7, and then 3625 back to E flat. Like that. Okay, and the melody's gonna go like this. And finally, the melody of the third A section is going to be back in the tenor. And then we go into solos. Now it is time to write out some harmony, but again, I'm going to start by writing out the chord changes. Okay. Okay. 
now when all the sax is coming, I'm debating whether I want to start it in harmony or whether I want to start in unison and then grow to harmony. So this particular little melodic phrase is not very conducive to like jumping straight into harmony anywhere in here. The only spot that's like actually conducive to blossoming in the harmony is right here. So I think I'm just going to start the whole thing harmony. Okay, and now this spot is getting a little bit low to try to put it in harmony. Um, like, the B flat minor 7 is probably fine going like that, but... The, this low... B flat over E flat major. Like I would normally harmonize it like probably like that. Which it's probably okay. But if it were any lower, I would probably refrain from doing that. Because it's gonna get really muddy down there. Um, let's see. Okay, what am I doing here? I'm going like that. Actually, I'm thinking this major seventh jump might be a good spot to switch into um, drop two voicings like this. Yeah. I think that's how I want to do it. And then I'll go. Okay. Same sort of deal. I had a problem with earlier where the nine and the root are serving the same function. So I, if I treated them the same way, I would end up with a lot of repeated notes. So what I'm actually gonna do, uh, I could treat this like passing notes. Except the passing chord here would be very non-diatonic, and I think I want to avoid that right now. Because um, up until this point, it's all been very um, centered in the key of either E-flat or A-flat, and I don't want to have this sudden step outside of that. Except that it's on an on an offbeat, so it probably get masked pretty well. Um, okay. I'm gonna come back to this in a second, but first I'm gonna 
deal with the E flat 7. Now here I don't have that same sort of problem because this is a quarter note, so I'm not like super worried about having a lot of repeated notes. Okay, I know what I can do here. What I'm going to do is I am going to harmonize it the same way, but when I explode it, I'm only going to have the uh, alto, alto one move, so the rest of the notes actually don't even need to be re-articulated. Just to show you what that's like, I'm going to actually go ahead and do that right now. There, like that. So the rhythm is slightly different there. The inner voices are all missing one articulation, but that's fine. Okay. Now here is really too low to try to harmonize it in four parts. So I think I'm gonna have another, not another, I'm gonna have a unison blossom thing because I've not had one of those in this section yet. Um, let's see, my target chord is, I think is going to look like that, or I could actually drop to it like that. No, I changed my mind. I'm going to do what I've heard referred to as a unison splat, where instead of growing from one to two, three, four, it's all just going to stay one until it suddenly switches from one part to four part, like that. Perfect. And I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier, where um, the inner voices don't need to re-articulate these notes until here. I'm going to have it articulate there. And then the chord changes to D flat 7. Oops. Okay. So now I gotta deal with this passing chord. I'm going to do that. And again, I don't really need to worry about the repeated note because this is a long note. this 
And that's perfect because all the voices move. And then here, I'm kind of tempted to go back to drop two. What would that look like? One repeated note, no huge jumps. I think I'm going to go like that. And then closed again. Perfect, like that. That is the, the second A. Okay. Bridge. How am I going to do this? B flat minor. I think I'm going to go like this. And yes, there are a lot of repeated notes in there. And in this particular case, that's actually kind of the, the um, sound that I'm going for. So in this case, it's actually a good thing. Okay, I'm actually going to call this... E flat seven flat nine and I might need to reharmonize some of this like that. Okay. So I could go with um, an F sharp diminished seventh chord because that is part of the sound of an E E flat seven flat nine. But that's going to give us like a total diminished sound, and I'm not sure if that's what I really want to go for right here. So what I think I'm actually going to do instead is, um, since this flat 9 is another substitution for a root, I'm harmonizing this the same way, and we're getting some repeated notes in there. Cool. By the way, did I, I may have forgot to mention right here, this bar, and right here, this bar, I am going to do either a unison blossom or a unison splat thing, which is why I'm not harmonizing them just yet. Okay, here. Okay, I, 
I'm actually going to change how I'm doing this. I want to do some triads here because right here, I definitely want a B flat major triad over D7 because that's going to give us a perfect D7 alt sound. So let's see. Um, I'm going to go like that. And then this is an E7, so I'm going to give us a G major triad over E7. Give us an E7 sharp 9. And then here. Actually, the harmony changes partway through there. So I'm going to harmonize this. Um, okay. First of all, right here, I would normally I would be tempted to harmonize an F minor eleven. Like that. The problem is. I feel like that I fear that's gonna make it sound too much like an E flat major chord, even though there's an F in the bass, which I don't want. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go like that. Cause that's a little bit less um tonally solidifying. And then Similar thing over this C7 chord. I don't want to. I'm hesitant to write an E flat major triad. So, what other options do I have? G flat major? Which is a, almost an alt sound, but sharp 11, flat 9. I don't know, how would that sound? I kind of like the sound of the sharp 11 especially because it's just like it's just a neighbor chord basically from this f because the whole rest of the um not a neighbor chord a neighbor tone because the whole rest of the chord is staying the same i think i i think that's actually exactly how i want it yeah i think that's cool okay awesome and trombone For starters, I'm just going to write them in octaves with the trumpets. This whole first phrase, or first two phrases. And now here. This is where I'm going to break them up. Let's see. Perfect, like that. Okay. And this top note does not need a slur. Okay. Beautiful.
Okay. Now we gotta write some backgrounds under the third A in the tenor. Um, okay. So first of all, I've got this one hit in mind that I want to keep coming back to throughout the chart. And it's gonna go like this. And let's see. The trombones, I think. Like that. Okay, and my saxes are going like that. Okay, so this is the hit that is going to happen a couple times. Um, first measure of each A. Like that. Like that. Okay. So that's one, two, Actually, I want to go like this. Like that. And I'm going to put in little passing notes here. Like that, perfect. Okay. Again, I gotta bring in the harmony, the chord changes.
Oops, that is not what I wanted. I wanted that. There we go. And I'll, I will figure out what each of those grace nuts is going to be um, after I explode all of these. But I am just going to copy paste the trumpet parts into the bone parts down the octave, like that. Which is okay because I think there are, there are almost no half steps. I think there was one here. Yeah. So I'm gonna go like that. Perfect. Okay. And that is the head. Okay. So those. Okay, what I'm gonna do First, I'm going to put in slash notation in the base, actually. I could put in slash notation in the base, but with this particular kind of groove, I'm kind of thinking it might be better to, like, write out a sample bass line, at least for a little bit. But I'm going to come back to that. And then we go like this, and that is the solo section. Okay. Now, backgrounds. Uh, I'm going to leave the first A section blank. Second A, we're going to go like this. This should be like that.
Okay. Now, since I've got this series of two fives going on, I want to like have the same idea happening the whole time, every two bars. More or less. But I've got this other idea. Um, and I'm kind of thinking they could just. I wonder how they would look if they just basically like overlapped like that. I'm talking rhythmically, by the way. Um, I'm I have not even started to think about the harmony yet. Yeah, okay. I think this is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go like this. So, there seems to be a pattern emerging here of, like, I have a rhythmic idea, and then I repeat it, and then I do this something similar, but it's like slightly different. So like right here where we're going, ending on a short note, ending on a short note, but then the rhythm is almost the same, except that it ends on a long note. And I'm not sure if that, if this melody is gonna work, this melody, because it's ending on a flat seven, Actually, I think the flat seven is fine right there because there's enough harmony happening here to reestablish the tonal center of E flat. So yeah, that's gonna be fine. Now, my idea here is I'm gonna take the same sort of ideas that I was using in the second A, and I'm going to copy them into the third A, but I'm going to embellish them a little bit. Oops, I want to turn this post this down a major second.
There we go. Perfect. Like that. Okay. Harmonizing time. Okay, here. Okay, so I could think of a way to harmonize this E flat as like a passing chord over this B flat seven, but I'm actually thinking it might just be easier and also just sound smoother if I change it to an F. Actually, I kind of like the sound of that better anyway. Okay, so we're gonna go like this. That's supposed to be an E flat. Um, which I'm going to harmonize like this. Oops. Not like that. Like that. Perfect. There we go. Okay. So I think I'm just doing all the backgrounds in like standard four part closed voicing and then I'll double everything in the lower parts down the octave. And the normal way that I write backgrounds is I give backgrounds to all the parts that don't have solo changes, which is gonna be trumpets one, three, and four, alto two, tenor two, and bones two, three, and four. Okay, and now even though this G doesn't like really fit over a B flat minor seven, I'm just gonna harmonize it as though it were already this E flat seven here. So I'm gonna go like this. That should be an E flat again. That is getting awfully low to have it doubled down the octave. I'm going to have to come up with another way to harmonize that. Oops, that chord should go here. There we go, and that is background. Okay. Oops. 
I missed it there. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. This whole section here, I'm gonna first. I'm gonna turn it into drop two voicings, and then I'm gonna explode it like this. Oops. I want this. Um, so rather than doubling everything at the octave, I'm going to double everything in octaves. So like trumpet one, trumpet three is going to be the same. Trumpet four and alto one is going to be the same. Tenor one and bone two is going to be the same. And then bones three and four. So it's going to look like that. I actually put that in the wrong tenor. There we go, like that. All the rest of the backgrounds I think are written high enough that I can double them down an octave, except maybe right here. That's low. Okay, see part of the problem is I feel like it can be really clunky when you're um, switching back and forth between how you're splitting up all the different harmonies. So typically I try to keep it as consistent as I can when I'm doing this sort of thing. I definitely forgot to turn that into a drop too. Okay. Here, I'm just gonna fix that like that. Perfect, there we go. Okay, that is backgrounds, and I can explode the rest of this stuff later. Oh, 
Okay. Soli. So, for the Soli, because it's more of like a funky vibe, I'm trying to go for like more funky bluesy language rather than like straight out of bebop land. And like, even when I'm writing a bebop solely, like there's gonna be some blues influence in there and vice versa here. Like there's probably gonna be a little bit of bebop language, but overall I'm trying to keep it more in a funk vibe. So I've written out like a draft of how the Soli's going to sound, and I'll probably make some edits along the way, but this is the start of what I come up with. And see, this is the type of thing I mean when I say there's probably going to be a little bebop language. Like, turns like that, I feel like, kind of have a bebop vibe to them. Which is okay. Like, like in this scenario, I think it's still okay in small doses. Oops, I keep forgetting to switch what rhythm I'm using. There we go, that's how I want it. Not quite. There we go.
the, okay. That is the solely melody that I came up with. So. Okay, so the soli is 32 bars, which in this particular chart is half a chorus. So it's over two A's. So I'm going to go ahead and put the harmony in. Okay, but before I even start harmonizing anything, I'm going to see if I want to make any adjustments to the melody. Oops, that is not what I want. That's what I want. Okay. So first of all, the program is not recognizing that this is supposed to be swung eighths, so there we go. Okay, I want to adjust this. Okay, so I don't really like the notes that I put in this 16th lick right here. Um, first of all, I think one way that I like to get more of a funky vibe rather than a bebop vibe is using less passing notes and things of that nature like trying to keep it more um, diatonic I guess Yeah, see, just from making this last um, beat three more diatonic, it's already starting to sound a little bit more of what I'm going for. Um, I want to do something about this, though. What, what is the harmony again? It's D flat seven.
So here's my problem. I'm not really digging the whole idea of having a how I did this 16th note run in general. I kind of want to rework it all together. The problem is um, I've got this other 16th note run at the end that I really like, but I feel like if that's the only double time thing in the whole solely, then it's gonna seem really out of context. And like there, there's little things like this, but it, if it's just a one beat worth of double time, that's like almost not really helping anything. Um, I feel like this last double time lick would be really justified by having an actual double time lick earlier in the chart, earlier in the solely. So, um, and unfortunately this is, around here is looking like the only spot that it's going to work. I'm just not liking how I laid this lick out. I kind of like that better, going like this. No, wait. Okay, that's getting better. I like beat three. I just don't know what I'm going to do with beat two to lead into beat three really well. seventh sound actually. Okay, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna go with. I like that better.
I think I know exactly what the problem was, actually. It's like, the lick I had before was like really clearly in the key of G flat major because A flat minor, D flat seven is a two five in G flat major. So the modulation back to E flat major was a really clear shift in tonal center, which is exactly what I was trying to avoid. Um, when I said I want to make this more of a funky vibe, but then I have this diminished seventh arpeggio, which is totally devoid of shifting toward, um, pointing towards one tonal center, which I think is exactly what makes this work. Yeah, that's perfect. The other thing I'm trying to think about here is like, I want to write a lick that's like gonna feel decently natural to the sax player's fingers. Cause like, this is really fast to have a double time lick. And it's like, it's like right on the cusp of manageable. Um, I think, I mean, based on my limited mediocre knowledge of the saxophone, it's like, um, I would hesitate to write a double time lick that's much faster than this. Um, so I'm just trying to make it a little more, more comfortable for them. I don't want to give them something like super crazy technically challenging at this speed. Okay, so yeah, but with that, I think the whole melody is great. So I'm going to get into some harmony. So when I'm writing sax solis, I've heard that like the thing to strive for is a mixture between four part harmony with the melody doubled five part harmony and unison and i'm going to start out i'm going to start out in five part but unfortunately sibelius cannot explode five different voices it can only go up to four so i'm just going to write the um alto and tenor parts in the alto one part and then i'll write the berry part in later Okay, so here I'm using all these um, quartal open fourth C voicings. Okay. So what I'm doing here is these like quartal open modal voicing, like so what style voicings, because these are like kind of quintessential more modern and I guess more funky vibe which is exactly what I'm going for and I'm going to start off doing these first few bars in five part harmony the problem is Sibelius cannot explode five parts it maxes out at four so I'm going to have to go and put the berry part in later Okay. 
And here is where I'm going to start putting it into um, what's the word? Regular drop two with the uh, melody doubled. Especially on this fast stuff, it I feel like it can get a little bit overwhelming if you try to have five part harmonies on these like double time licks. Um, Okay. First of all, I'm actually going to change that to a nine, partly just because I feel like it would be a little bit easier to, for a sex player, to um have a like a what's the word a turn between F and G versus between E flat and G, um, and then here I'm going to do like a. What's the word? Half step plane chromatic approach chord thing like that. And here, since we're encountering the same problem, nine and and root serve the same function, so we would end up with a lot of repeated notes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a diatonic passing chord like that. thing okay and now I want to think in terms of target chord which is this where I might put a root on the bottom instead of a nine but something like that okay So I could put another chromatic half step plane thing in here, but I want to keep it all within the scope of A flat major until we get to the end of four and the harmony changes. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna do like a diatonic neighbor chord. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Yeah, that's perfect. Same thing, diatonic neighbor chord. Okay, again, I'm thinking in terms of how it's gonna end, so. We kinda have to have a repeated note in there, um, the C flat, because that chord is, you pretty much have to include in both an A flat minor or a D flat seven. But other than that, that's fine. How am I gonna do this? I think I'm gonna go like that. Except that that gives us that C flat repeated in the same voice a bunch of times. I'm actually gonna go like this. Yeah, like that, that's perfect. Okay, and we're back to E flat. As you can see, I'm doing more of the modal thing, and I will fill in these passing notes after I explode everything, because that's gonna make it easier on my brain. 
Okay, C minor. F minor. How do I want to do this? I'm thinking I'm doing just like a, whoops, no, a diatonic neighbor chord like that. That, yeah, the harmony actually changed to B flat seven there, so I should go like that. There we go. Okay, now we're on G half diminished. Okay, target chord is that. I'm doing a half, here I'm doing a half step plane thing, which is um, that. Now this A flat, uh, it's one of those weird things that doesn't really fit over a G half diminished, the flat nine, but it like it kind of does. Um, it's it's difficult to work with. Um, But one thing I want to try. I kind of want to try like um like an enclosure of chords is the best way I can describe it. Um like a flat half diminished, G flat half diminished, G half diminished. And then this I can harmonize just like a normal G half diminished. How does that sound? I'm debating on whether I like this or not. I think I'm going to leave it as is, and I might come back and change it later if I really need to. Okay, now, C7 flat 9. Most of this is just coming straight out of the diminished scale, so I'm just going to do that. Just have a passing chord right here, which is F minor, but aside from all that, this is all just the diminished scale. Okay. 
Okay, how do I want to do this? Okay, I think what I want to do is go like this and then use like a diatonic approach chord here. Which would be that. Okay, and then here, what do I want to do here? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Here. Actually, okay, I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna do this thing where I'm switching back and forth between drop two and close voicings. Because of the change of register, it makes it work out really nicely. The problem is we, we wind up with a couple of repeated notes again. Kind of, I was kind of afraid that was going to happen. Um, I might just do the thing where I tie these over and that could take care of that problem. Here, I'm gonna use a 
almost diatonic passing chord, diatonic except for the A. I'm actually going to change that to that, so that way we don't have any repeated notes. I'm gonna go like that, maybe. No, I'm gonna keep it in closed voicings. I feel like it would be too weird otherwise. Okay, these, I could do the same thing. I'm switching between drop two and closed. I'm just concerned about that being too low, but like, how low does that go? It goes to C. And I'm transposing it down a fifth, so it would go to F. Yeah, no, I think that's fine, actually. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this um, diminished passing chord thing idea where um, you're switching back and forth between a G diminished 7th chord and an A flat 6th chord like this. That. Like that, perfect. So we're ending like that. Okay. Uh, what actually what I want to do is I want to go like this. Because the way the melody works out makes these switches between drop two and closed work out very nicely. Okay, so I'm harmonizing beat four like this, but I want to change if I'm harmonizing beat three, no, the end of three. 
I want to give it a little better voice leading. So that would, what would that be? Is that like that? Yeah, that's perfect. No, like that, that's perfect. Okay, so right here, even though we are technically in the scope of D flat seven, we're outlining a G half diminished arpeggio. So I'm almost tempted to like harmonize this as if it were G flat half diminished. Actually, let me just see how this would work out. I'm doing the G flat half diminished thing. Again, I'm going to deal with all these passing tones later. And then this ending lick is going to be in unison because we I have not done anything in unison yet. So that is the end of the soli. Um, so after all this, we go back to the bridge and then the last day and the tenor. And then I'm going to put in an outro. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this stuff from the intro um, or most of it at least and then the tune like this. And I'm doing another one of these unison blossom things.
Okay, how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna go, first of all, I'm gonna go like this. Again, I'm starting to think about how I want this to end. Um, and I'm just going to end on this. It's not going to end, but this little um, section is going to end on this big B flat 7 chord. And then I'm going to put that same E flat major. 7 hit at the end right here, the end of the last bar. Um, so I'm just thinking about how I want to voice this, this B flat 7. Mm. I'm going to go like that. And I think I'm going to go like that. Okay. Um, so my thinking here is I'm, it's going to like start off in unison and then it goes to a little bit more color. Like right here, it's going to be a B flat major triad. And then here, we're going to add the seventh to A flat. And then here, I think we're going to add some color like the nine and the 13, I'm thinking. Okay. I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to go. You have the seventh. And I'm going to give the thirteenth to there. Perfect. I'm going to put a thirteenth, a thirteen there again. No, actually. I want to put one more person on the melody. So I'm going to go like that. So it starts B flat, then 
then let's see. You got a B flat major triad. Okay, here I'm gonna put both tenors on the third. Then I'm gonna put the alto on the fifth. Maybe. No, I'm gonna keep the alto on the melody for now. And I'm kind of thinking I don't need to worry about harmonizing the passing tones here. Like, I can just... Anytime a horn is not playing the melody, I'll just put it in um, a dog quarter like that. Let me see how this sounds. What have we got here? We've got yeah, perfect. And then I'm just going to go here like that. And same thing with the saxes. And since we have that in the berry, um, I can I can move some of these around. We're gonna go like that. Okay. So, with that, that is pretty much how all of the horn parts are going to lay out in here. So, I still have to go through and put in all of the rhythm section parts and everything, but this is more or less what the chart is going to look like. So, um... I'm going to call it quits for now. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.